Hey guys, Barry here. I just wanted to mention that this video is part of a course that I have on Udemy. If you'd like to support my work and get the full course, please use the link in the description below to get it at a discounted price. Thanks guys, back to the video. What is up guys, welcome back. Uh, at the moment I am looking at our package.json folder which you can find right over there. And I would like to show you the scripts that we have to use in our application. This comes with create react app. We have these react scripts, start, build, test, and eject. Now I will fix these icons in the next episode. That's my plan. But for now, we're going to focus on these scripts. So you can run these scripts given over here. These are the shortcuts to run the actual scripts. So saying npm run start is the same as technically saying npm run react script start uh, and if you do run build it will be the same as saying npm run react scripts build so that's how this scripting kind of works um, yeah let me just run build quickly and show you it's quite quick um, you might not have this build folder here I just built it earlier but what it basically does is it creates this nice package little build folder here. Uh, it's busy building it, so this is going to get more full. There we go, it's done. So there's no home page set in my package JSON, so it just says, you know, you can put something there. But basically, it makes your app ready to be deployed to a site. So the whole app is bundled down into something nice and optimized for being deployed somewhere. And this is pretty great. It's, it's, I think it's quite cool. We're not actually going to deploy anything in this course. So this is kind of the last we're going to deal with the build stuff. Um, I'll say the best for last. So I won't run start yet. If you are using yarn, you can literally just say yarn build. Um, I'm not going to run it now, but you, you basically replace uh, npm run with yarn and then your script. But let me run npm run and we can do the test. So this runs all of our tests. Um, there's only one test in our application. That's over here. And it just checks if um, the learn react link is rendered. And that learn react link is this link over here. So it, it finds the text um, or the get by text is, is a function and it, it finds learn react as the text, which is this. Um, and it just checks if that link element is is there um, to be in the document. So it runs all our tests. Uh, it says there's no test since the last time we changed in the commit. Um, that is because we're not committing anything. So I'm going to press A to run all tests. Uh, and this should run that test. And it says renders learn react links. So clearly if we run the testing thing, it works. We will be using tests in our in our functions, our functions to generating the board and stuff. I don't really like to use tests in the actual like rendering components just because I feel like TypeScript kind of handles that quite well and it's just extra coding and, and there's better ways to test. I think you can do integration testing and end-to-end -end testing rather than unit testing components. But that's just my opinion. Lots of people differ. If you want to write component tests, unit tests, you are welcome to. I'm just not going to teach that too much in this, this course. So that works. The final cool thing is let us go back to this. I'm kind of ignoring that now. Oh, uh, before I go on to it, actually this eject script, uh, don't run eject. I mean, run eject if you are, if you are serious about your project and you are, you want to start, um, updating webpack things and all that. But for small, simple projects like this one, uh, there's no need to run eject. It's it's nicer to just stick with React scripting things. I I've you know I run eject in my personal massive projects and my I also do it in my business projects. But for create React app, we just eject is is only for those when you want to really go under the hood and change things, which we will not be doing in this course. We're not that insane. Final script and the cool one and the one we are going to use the most is npm run start. Now this actually starts our application. So we can see that our app is actually built and it starts up pretty quickly. It's busy starting the development server and then it opens Chrome because Chrome is my default browser. It will open whatever your default browser is. So it opens up to localhost. If I can actually move that to the side here, we can see it's still starting up. So it takes a bit of time. 
there we go it is compiled successfully and here we have um, edit source app txx tsx and saves to reload so we could go into there and we could say um learn react sudoku oops i can't spell so if i save that then this will hot reload and that should update there we go you see it says learn react sudoku um and you, you can just do whatever you want in here and i don't know just type a bunch of things and it will it will do things um this feature here where it just i save and it closes i will show you how to do that in the next episode it's quite cool we're going to use some plugins to make everything look pretty and stuff it actually should work automatically for you right now because we haven't done it in the project yet but i will i'll show you what what does that and how that works anyways um, i'm going to delete that and i'm going to kind of go back to what we had and i will catch you guys in the next video cheers guys